David Ortiz, guilty of the offense of capital murder as charged in the indictment and as instructed in this charge. So that came down pretty darn quickly. Hey, welcome back to the Long Crime Network. Michael Bryant here. As you just saw there, former Patrol, uh, Border Patrol agent Juan David Ortiz found guilty of murder. Uh, that happened earlier this week and went boom right to sentencing immediately. Sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. So this former Navy veteran was accused of killing four women, uh, allegedly those in the sex worker trade. Uh, also attempting to kill a fifth person, all taking place in Laredo, the border town there back in 2018. So I've got a special guest with me, but before we get into that, here's a tease, all right? Here is part of what perhaps got this jury to their decision in about four hours. This is the rebuttal argument from the prosecutor in this case, Isidro Alaniz. Cold, callous, calculating, just like that. You know what's incredulous? For him to sit there and say, well, then I went home, took a shower to my lovely wife and my kids, and I went to work the next morning. Wow. That is incredulous. That is shocking. That is shocking. And it is terrifying. It is terrifying to have the enemy within the ranks of law enforcement. He knew it. He did disgrace the uniform. He did disgrace his country. He did disgrace the blue. But that's not all he said. That's not all he said. In his own words, in his own words, the monster comes out of me. They are turds. Mierda in Spanish. They are dirty. Why doesn't anyone take out these I wanted to clean up the streets. I grabbed it by the horns. What did he say about Claudine? Play, pay attention. He said, with this one, there was no paranoia. With this one, there was no paranoia. All the other I took him to 35 North, and I'll keep cleaning, cleaning up the streets. And at one time, he says, I'm like, let's go do it again. So quite the impassioned closing there. That was the rebuttal, and I'm joined by Isidro uh, Alaniz right now. There he is, live from San Antonio, uh, and Catherine Lozardo still here. She's just up the road. I think that's uh, up 35 east, uh, about five hours, which in Texas terms is next door, basically. Uh, so, <laughs> hey, uh, let, me, let me ask you this. First of all, congratulations on, on the win. This was a crazy case because of the victim's alleged status, because of the impact the whole Border Patrol situation uh, with what's going on in this country now at the border and Laredo being front and center for those activities. So let me, let me ask you just generally, what was the plan going into this? Did it play out as expected? You had the, uh, the uh, false confession defense. Give, give me just in a, in a nutshell there how you approach this case and, and if it went as expected. Uh, th thank you, Michael. That's that's right. This this is a, a unique case on so many on so many fronts. Uh, one of our one of our themes in this case was that no one is above the law and no one is below the law. Uh, the status or, or or work that these these women did is irrelevant. Everyone in, in this country is entitled to the protection of the law. They were innocent victims in this situation, and that's the way we approached it. And uh, it was one of our themes. You know, I, I got to ask you, because when it happened, I had to do one of those, you know, double takes. You lost a player in the midst of the game here. Uh, and it was, I think, the fourth day Joshua Davila said, you know, I think I've had enough of working in this office. G what happened? And was it or wasn't it connected to how this case was playing out in court? Well, that's that's an unfortunate situation, but that's that's real life. Uh, Michael, you know, you can't plan for things like that. It's unfortunate that uh, he decided to walk away, um, but we were prepared. And, you know, it's a personnel matter, um, but we have a bigger mission, and that mission is bringing justice to these victims. So it, basically our philosophy is next man up, and uh, that's what we did. We had a great team. We lost one, but we had a goal, and that goal was justice. So we didn't skip a beat. It didn't change a thing. The evidence and the facts and our determination and our focus was on bringing, bringing justice. And quite frankly, I didn't have time to worry about somebody who quit. So we kept going forward.
Yeah, very unusual right in the, in the midst of the trial. The jury had to be thinking, there was a guy here for four days and now he, he, he's gone. I know that uh, there was a, a decision made not to go for the death penalty in this case. Was that an issue between your office and Mr. Davila that uh, maybe he wanted the death penalty and that wasn't on the table? No, no, it had nothing to do with that at, uh, at all. You know, it, these are high pressure situations. I mean, when you're when you're in a capital murder case and this was his first, uh, it, it is a high pressure situation. You never know how people are going to how they're going to react to pressure. Uh, I've been down this road before. I am the leader of this office, and and this is my third capital murder uh, case. Uh, and so, for the for the best uh, for the betterment of the team, I should say, uh, he he left the team, and we kept moving forward. So. You know, that was really something that is, is irrelevant in, in, in the big picture for us. And uh, we abandoned death uh, more than two months ago. And that was at the at many meetings and discussions at, at the request of the family. You heard Joey Cantu speak about that. Uh, he has a very unique story and he said it there in open court. He had lived and served a, pris a long prison sentence. And when, when we got together sometime in July and had all the victims' families together, they collectively and unanimously asked me, the DA, to remove the death penalty. And I thought about it. And at the end of the day, it's not about me. It's about the families. And it's about justice. And justice is different for everyone. In this case, they felt that a life without prison would be a more severe punishment. To have him live the rest of his days thinking about what he did, locked up, knowing that he'll never see the light of day again. So, and that could be debated for days, but I see their point. Uh, some cases, perhaps the death penalty is the right punishment, but in this one, life without the possibility of parole is what the family wanted and it's what the family got. Subscribe for more.